Hi there and welcome. Today I am sharing with you some tips for making your plates last longer with the Gemini Junior. This is a video that I actually shot parts of a long time ago, but I was still experimenting with ways to kind of make your plates last longer with the machine and get great results. So I spent these months trying things out, not just trying it once or twice, but using it for several weeks for a lot of die cutting to make sure it stands up over time. Now, a big disclaimer, I do break the rules in this video a lot. I do not follow the instructions that come with the manual. So if you try these things, keep that in mind. We're taking a risk. I didn't break any rules in high school, so I feel like I guess I need to break a bunch of them now. But I found that I got great results and had no problems with these methods. Okay, so the machine I'm focusing on most is the Crafter's Companion Gemini Junior, which I think is a fantastic electric die cut machine. Now there is a full size version of this called the Gemini, but I tend to reach for the Junior the most, and I think that's what most people have. Now I will talk briefly about the Spellbinders Platinum machine a little later in this video, which is a manual machine, but right now I'm focusing on this. I got a lot of emails asking about warping of plates with this machine. Also, this machine recently changed some of their plates, so I want to go through what seems to be available now. As far as the plates that the machine comes with, there are two cutting plates, and I believe this is what most people have trouble with warping. You can buy replacement plates, but of course you want to try to make them last as long as possible, which we're going to talk about today. Now, in addition to the clear cutting plates, there is a magnetic shim. This is the new magnetic shim design, it seems. This, I think, is what machines come with now, and if you buy a replacement, this is what you get. It used to be just a solid black magnetic shim, but now it has this white grid on both sides. And I found that it performs a little bit differently, so it caused me to change the sandwich that I use, and that's, again, what I will be featuring today. Now, this you can buy replacements for also. Next, there is the plastic shim. This is the foggy white looking piece. This is necessary for doing the die cutting, and you can buy replacements for this too. There is a metal shim available, and you can use that for intricate die cuts, although I rarely use it. I will show how to use it if you do want to. But these are the basic plates for the Gemini Junior. Now before I show you the sandwiches that I like to do, let me show you what the Gemini Junior instruction manual recommends, and I will link to that instruction manual below so you can make sure it's all okay. So you have a clear cutting plate, your cardstock, your die with the cutting edge down, then you take the magnetic shim, which will go right up against the die, your plastic shim, and then the other clear cutting plate. And then you need to flip this over and run it through your die cut machine. So they want it so the cutting edge of the die is facing up. So you just take these plates and run them through your machine and you get a great cut. However, I find that the magnetic shim doesn't hold up over time that way, nor does the cutting plate. And that's why I didn't run that through the machine. I didn't want to mess up my shim. So here is my fix. And remember, this is breaking the rules. I'm using all of the same products, all of the same uh, plates and shims. But I make a big change to the magnetic shim. So I am using my Tim Holtz trimmer, any good trimmer should work, and I am cutting about a quarter of an inch off of each side. I found that when you die cut a lot with this shim, it stretches a bit and gets kind of warped and gets bigger actually. So I find if I trim some off, I actually get better results. It also helps with the taped sandwich that I'm about to do, which is another one of my tricks. So I cut a little bit off each side again. Remember, I'm breaking the rules. So <laughs> please know that this is a risk that I took, but I've been doing it for, you for months and months and it's working fine. Okay, the next thing I do is I have one of my clear cutting plates and I am going to use strong clear packing tape to tape these two together. And I'm trying to center the magnetic shim on the clear cutting plate, because remember we cut a little bit off, so it's a little bit smaller. I used to tape this with purple tape or other types of tape, but I found the clear packing tape was stronger and held up over time. I do a lot of die cutting for my job, 
a lot. I mean, an incredible amount. And I find that this clear tape holds up for quite a while, quite a while, before I need to kind of replace it and make it clean again. I also um, gave this trick to my friend Christina Werner, and she's had success with it too. So I'm hoping if you try it, you have no problems. Okay, so I'm putting that clear packing tape on all four edges, the two sides, and then on the edge. And you can see I'm not going all the way to the corners. I'm just putting a sizable piece down. Okay, so next I'm going to take my uh, plastic shim and tape that on top of the magnetic shim. So what will happen is the magnetic shim will be sandwiched between the clear cutting plate and the plastic shim. Notice that this is different than what the instruction manual says because I am breaking the rules. Now I will now tape these together. So again, the magnetic shim is sandwiched in the middle. I originally had just taped the three together without taping the magnetic shim to the clear plate first but I found the magnetic shim would kind of move in there a little bit and stretch. So I find it best to first tape the magnetic shim to the clear plate and then the plastic shim on top of that. So what you have now is one plate and you don't have to fuss with all the individual plates. I find this to be a huge benefit. I don't like to have to layer all the plates together and by doing this, it just acts as one. And I found that it helps with warping too. I do recommend pressing this tape down firmly. You can use a bone folder too, so that it really is smooth against your plates. So I, from now on, am going to call this my DIY plate. It's made up of a clear cutting plate, magnetic shim, and plastic shim all taped together. So now let's start die cutting. I have my other clear cutting plate, my cardstock, the die with the cutting edge down, and my DIY plate and I'll run it through my machine. Now you could run it this way or flipped. It doesn't seem to matter a whole lot in the results that you get. So now you can see that die cut beautifully. Now one thing I do recommend is see that clear cutting plate laying there over on the left? You want to rotate and flip that every time you use it. I just find that will help to prevent warping. So last time I cut it one way, so I'm just gonna flip it and cut it the other way this next time. Now another cool thing about this DIY plate, last time I put the plastic shim against the die, this time I put the clear cutting plate against the die and it doesn't seem to matter either. They hold up well over time. Now with this method, after a couple months of die cutting, I do get a little bit of warping with the plastic shim, which I'll show you, but not a whole lot. And my clear cutting plate stayed nice and flat. Okay, so there it shows you how you can use that DIY cutting plate. Now, if you have a super intricate die and you're having trouble cutting it, which I think is rare with the Junior, you can put your metal shim right on top of the back of your die. Then put your DIY cutting plate. But I'll tell you, I rarely use that metal shim. I find that I usually don't have any trouble cutting. If I have a tricky die that's very intricate, I'll just run it through twice and then I don't need the metal shim. Avoiding the metal shim also helps to prevent warping. But I do use it sometimes and I haven't had any problem with this sandwich. So there you can see this die is a little bit different than the last one I used, a little more intricate. I thought it would be good to show you some cutting plates that I've used for quite a while now with that DIY plate design. So these are ones you can see well loved. Check out the cutting plate, used quite a bit but it's still nice and flat. Now you will get a little bit of warping with your magnetic shim and your plastic shim because notice my magnetic shim has stretched over time. That's what's tricky about this new magnetic shim. Now I will say you can still die cut with this with no problem. You can see how the two clear plates are still flat so you can die cut wonderfully. But what I like to do is every couple months take the plates apart that I tape together. So here you can see my magnetic shim. I'm removing all the tape. I don't do this often. I just find when it starts to get a little worn, I just like to clean it up. So the plastic shim does have a little bit of warping to it, but if you put it under something very heavy for a while, it will flatten out. And my magnetic shim has stretched. It actually stretches over time. So that's why I went and I trimmed more off. 
So now it is again smaller than the clear cutting plate. And now I'm just going to tape all the same plates back together and I can continue to use them with no problem. You can see I'm kind of flattening out the magnetic shim as I tape it down. It's pretty amazing how much it's stretched over time. I do find that the magnetic shim does hold up better when it's sandwiched. If you put the magnetic shim up against the back of your die, I do find it gets kind of wonky and <laughs> distorted. So I feel it's best to sandwich it like this. Again, this is breaking the rules. I'm totally breaking the rules, so take, you know, do this at your own risk, but I haven't had any problems. So now here is my new DIY plate. Really, it's my old one just redone, and you can see how it's nice and clean and kind of flat again. Okay, so let me show you how this works just fine. I have my clear cutting plate, and you can see it's been used and abused, but it's still flat. My paper, my die, my DIY cutting plate, and here I'm running it through with the plastic shim facing up. It doesn't seem to matter. And then you'll see that it cuts beautifully with no problem at all. So this is what I found worked really well to prevent warping. I still do flip around that clear plate, but again, you can see lots of love, no warping. And here I'll demonstrate using the metal shim with it, which again, I rarely do. Now I do want to mention, if you prefer to follow the rules, which I totally get, I usually do myself, you could tape the three plates together in the order they recommend and use it as one plate, which really is a lot easier to handle than fussing with a bunch of plates. Also, I find that I get a little bit of warping with the plastic shim, it's never been a problem, but the nice thing is the plastic shim is cheaper than the clear cutting plate. So if you wanted to replace it over time, you could. But again, I haven't felt a need to replace it. I feel like it works great just as is, and it's very little warping. Now there is another option that works with the Gemini Junior and also with other die cut machines. Now this is to use a self-healing cutting plate. I had seen some crafters recommend using uh, self-healing cutting mats in their machine, but I, had, uh, I didn't have a whole lot of luck with that, but I know some people have. So I was excited at Creativation when iCrafter came out with iMend self-mending cutting plates. So these are meant for die cut machines. So this feels like a self-healing cutting mat, which many crafters have used before. And it's the perfect size to use with the Gemini Junior and other basic machines. Now, I will tell you that this is breaking the rules again. I'm breaking the rules again. But I wanted to show you what I found worked for the Gemini Junior with these plates and for the Platinum 6 from Spellbinders. Now, for the Gemini Junior, which I know most people are looking for ways to make their plates last longer, here's the sandwich I do. I have my two Gemini Junior clear cutting plates. On one of them, I put my I Mend self-healing plate, then my cardstock, then the die face down, then the other cutting plate on top, and then I run that through my machine. And it goes through very easily because of the flexibility of that cutting mat, but watch, it cuts wonderfully. So this is another option. With this, I find zero warping with my clear cutting plates. I do get a bit of warping over time, but not much, with the self-healing mat. However, you can put that under your Gemini Junior, under the weight of the Gemini Junior when you're not using it, and that seems to help flatten it out because there's some flexibility to it. I do try to rotate the self-healing mat every time I use it, like I normally do with my clear cutting plate. So whatever surface you're cutting into, whatever plate you're cutting into, it is always good to rotate it and use it upside down and backwards and flip it every time you use it because it's good to cut into all sides of it. That helps to prevent warping. So here you can see how beautifully that cut. So that's just another option for the Gemini Junior die cut machine. Now I wanted to show you this iMend self-healing cutting plate with the Spellbinders Platinum 6 machine. This is my favorite of the manual die cut machines. If you just want an old fashioned hand, hand crank machine, this is the one that I like. I will say that I've never had problems with plates warping with this machine, and I haven't heard many complaints of it happening, but I still wanted to address it in this video. Okay, so here is the Spellbinders Platinum machine. On the platform, it tells you how to use the plates to do different things such as cutting with a die. I usually just put paper and die in between these plates and follow the instructions. 
However, if you want to use a uh, self-healing mat with this, you could use the iMend self-healing mat. I put that directly on top of the platform, then the piece of cardstock, then the die face down, and then a traditional cutting plate on top. And I find that cuts lovely. I haven't used this a whole lot with this machine. I've just done it a handful of times, so I can't really attest to the long-term effects of this. So I will start using it and I'll update you in the video in the future, but I did want to include this just in case anyone asked. I hope that talking about these different plates is helpful to you. And if I think of anything later or questions pop up, I will put them in the top comment below. So the pinned comment, so be sure to check there. Before we go, I did want to talk about purple tape because I'm getting emails about this. So Thermoweb came out with purple tape a while ago that's perfect to use with die cutting. So the original purple tape are the dark purple ones there in the middle. And I like to keep it in a little tape dispenser like this so I could easily grab a piece. I really like purple tape because it's lower tack, so you can hold your die in place and run it through your die cut machine. You can use this tape to tape down paper when you do watercolor, so on and so forth. Well, they have recently changed the purple tape and it's now like the one that you see on the right and it's lower tack. So if you have had problems with the purple tape on the left, kind of tearing your paper when you remove it, you can try the new purple tape that's on the right because it's lower tack. So I just wanted to explain that I have a boatload of the purple tape on the left, so you'll still see me using that in videos. Okay, I hope this information on die cut machines and preventing warping on your plates is helpful to you. Again, be sure to check out the pinned comment below my video on YouTube. I will put any common questions or uh, updates to that there in case I forgot anything. In the middle here, I have a couple other videos, including more information on the two machines that I featured in this video, if you want to learn more. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you again soon and have a wonderful weekend.